The purpose of this video is to give you an overview of how to find and use cases on Westlaw Next. You can find cases in Westlaw Next by using the search box at the top of the screen. Let's first look at how to find a case using a citation. If you know the citation to the case that you want to access, simply enter your case citation into the search box. Then click on search or hit enter and your case should appear. To search for a case using keywords, you will first want to limit your search parameters. Click on the box next to the main search box. Under Jurisdiction, select Colorado and the 10th Circuit, and then click Save. And then in the search box, enter your search terms. Let's look for cases that discuss the tort of intentional infliction of emotional distress. Enter intentional infliction of emotional distress into the search box, and then click Search. On the results page, click on Cases on the left-hand side. Our search returned over 2,000 cases from the 10th Circuit or the State of Colorado dealing with intentional infliction of emotional distress. We will probably want to further limit our results. We can do that by adding more terms and search within results. We can further limit by jurisdiction, date, reported status, etc. Let's limit to the Colorado Supreme Court. Under jurisdiction, click on the plus next to Colorado and then select the box next to Supreme Court. Now we're down to 38 cases from the Colorado Supreme Court that have discussed intentional infliction of emotional distress. If we wanted to remove a filter, all we would need to do is click on Undo Filters. Now that we know how to find a case in Westlaw Next, let's explore what a case looks like. A case in Westlaw Next should look fairly similar to one you would find in a print reporter. The caption is located at the top of the case and includes the case citation, the court, the party names, the docket number, and the date it was decided. You can learn a lot about a case just by looking at its citation. For example, looking at this citation, the first number refers to the volume in which the case is located, the middle information refers to the reporter that the case is located in, and the last number refers to the page the case is located on. So this case is located on page 663 of volume 978 of the Pacific Reporter 2nd edition. Under the caption, you will find a case summary which provides information on the procedural history and a brief overview of the outcome. Next, you will find the Westlaw headnotes. We will not discuss these at length right now, but you should know that they summarize points of law within the case. The number of headnotes will vary depending on the length of the case and the number of legal issues involved. You can jump down to the portion of the case that discusses a particular issue by clicking on the headnote number. Following the headnotes, you will find information on the attorneys and judges in the case. Finally, you will come to the opinion. At the beginning of the opinion, you will find which justices or judges authored the opinion. It is important to note that all of the information before the text of the opinion has been added by editors at West and is intended to help you conduct research. It is not citable primary authority. Throughout the opinion, you will notice starred numbers. This is the pagination of the case. The page numbers apply to the text that appears after the starred numbers. For example, from the citation to this case, we know that it begins on page 663 of volume 978 of the Pacific Reporter 2nd edition. If I wanted to quote this case for the proposition that before a plaintiff can present a claim of outrageous conduct to the jury, the trial court must initially rule on whether the allegations of outrageous conduct are sufficiently outrageous as a matter of law, I would first find the headnote that discusses that point of law. I would click on the headnote number, which will take me down to that part of the case. I would then look for the nearest starred number. The nearest starred number is 666, but the information located on page 666 begins after the starred number. That is, page 666 begins with the words, jury. It is first the responsibility, which means that the information before the bracketed number is on the previous page. So the statement that before a plaintiff can present a claim to the jury, the trial court must first rule on whether the conduct was sufficiently outrageous is located on page 665. The last couple of features to point out about a case in Westlaw Next are the print and save functions, which are located at the top right-hand side. If you're working on a research project and want to be able to return to the case easily, you can save it to the research folder. You can also print, download, or email the case, or even send it to your Kindle. 
Also on the top right hand side of the case, there's a go to function, which lets you jump to different parts or sections within the case. Finally, there's a key sight symbol. We will talk about key sight at length in another video. That's all for your overview of cases in Westlaw Next.